everyone welcome back to the channel today is pie day and what better way to celebrate today than to talk about tech's favorite pie which is the raspberry pie so this is my first raspberry pie and I just want to give a shout out to our dear friend black bag data for being so generous and giving me my first raspberry pie this is the raspberry pie for model B in this video we will talk about what raspberry pie is what you need to use raspberry pie setting up a raspberry pi okay so there will be two parts for this video first part is the basics of raspberry pi setting it up with the raspberry pi os accessing it through ssh vnc and remote desktop and part two will be the project that i will be doing with the raspberry pi i've always wanted to play with it and do some projects but i didn't have time before and now that i have time i wanted to share with you how the project goes the basics of raspberry pi and also i think it's appropriate to share it today on pi day as well so if you're interested in today's video please keep on watching and without further ado let's get started okay so if you're new to raspberry pi the raspberry pi is a single board computer which means that it's a complete functioning computer that is built in a single circuit board just like this and to compare how small it is it's as small or as big as a credit card so this is also called a microcomputer because of the size but even if it's small it has all the functionality and capabilities of a desktop computer so raspberry pis are an inexpensive alternative to buying servers or computers because it only costs around 30 to 70 dollars depending on the specs so if you're doing a project and you just need a low powered computer this is a perfect solution for you because this is very cheap and easy to program you can put linux or other operating systems into it and it is really nice to have it for home labs and projects okay so for this raspberry pi i'm planning to do projects on it and i will show you everything step by step now let's get started with the raspberry pi specs and the parts okay so just like a computer it has all the functionalities that make the computer operate It just has a different form factor. So as you can see, there are different ports in here. On all sides, they are really like maximizing the small form factor for this. But they got everything. It covers everything. It has Wi-Fi, it has Ethernet, and all the ports for the peripherals. Okay, so let's get started with the project and setting up the Raspberry Pi. So there are a few things, of course, that you're gonna need because when you buy a Raspberry Pi, it just comes with this board. It doesn't come with the other accessories like the power supply and all of the adapters for the ports. So you'd have to pr provide that yourself. Okay, so let's get started with the basic that we need we need the power supply of course and the power supply connector here is USB-C this is for Raspberry Pi 4 I am not sure for the other models but for the Pi 4 it's USB-C okay so for the power supply in here there is a Raspberry Pi model that is available that is very compatible for this version of Raspberry Pi but you don't really have to buy the official one as long as it's 5 volts and 3 amps you should be good just like this just like any other power supply as long as it's 5 volts and 3 amps you should be good and USB-C so it really doesn't matter if you don't buy the official Raspberry Pi charger so this board comes with the CPU and the RAM but it doesn't come with storage so you would provide the storage for this and the form factor for the storage is a micro SD so you would need a micro SD for the storage for this next another important accessory for the display is the HDMI so this one supports HDMI but then it's a different form factor it's really small they really have to keep it to the size so what we have here is micro HDMI so I have found a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter in here so if you're gonna use a Raspberry 4 you would need an adapter for display just like this and of course for the keyboard and mouse there's actually four USB ports in here and there's an Ethernet port for the Ethernet so we should be good to go we can get started if we have all of the accessories okay so first thing that I'm gonna do is to set up the SD card and I'm gonna install the operating system here that we use so it'll be easy to set up our Raspberry Pi later if it's loaded already with the operating system so the OS that I'm gonna use in here is the Raspberry Pi OS 
Okay, so I'm just gonna insert my micro SD to my hub in here. So after inserting the micro SD to my computer, now I'm here on raspberrypi.com slash software for the Raspberry Pi OS installer and we are gonna do this part install Raspberry Pi OS using Raspberry Pi Imager. Raspberry Pi Imager is the quick and easy way to install Raspberry Pi OS and other operating system to a micro SD card ready to use with your Raspberry Pi. So this is where we are gonna download for Windows and I am gonna put it in here where my micro SD is. Okay, so let's run the imager and see what happens. Okay, so choose device. Our device is Raspberry 4 Model B, this one. And operating system would be just 64. Okay, so let's select that. Choose storage mounted SE. So this is what it is. And next, would you like to apply OS customization settings? Maybe not for now. Soon it will be erased. Do you want to continue? yes okay so this is installing and let's just wait for it to finish okay so it's now finished and now it says uh it has been written to the sd card and we can now remove it okay so now that the micro sd is set up with the installer for raspberry pi os we can now get started on setting up the raspberry pi and connecting the components first so I've read on the Raspberry Pi website that it's very important to connect the components in order to make sure that they are safe. So the first thing that we need to insert is the micro SD. So it's here at the bottom. Next to connect is the mouse, then the keyboard, then the display, and last would be the power supply. And the last thing that we should connect is the power supply. Since the Raspberry Pi doesn't really have a power switch, so once you plug it to the power supply, it will just immediately turn on. So, hopefully this works. Hopefully this will power up. So this is the USB-C power supply. And this is the port for the power supply. Ooh. Okay, so as soon as I plugged in the monitor, this lit up in here. So it's a good sign that it's powering on. And as you can see, all right, so I think it might be booting up. And I'm really excited for this. This is my first Raspberry Pi project and as you can see, it was just rough here for now, but hopefully this will work. Welcome to Raspberry Pi desktop. Mm, so cool. Now I can see my cursor and mm, introduction. All right, so this is not too bad. So far, no hiccups yet. Okay, welcome. Here's just a few settings here. Okay, now it's asking for user account in here. Next is connecting to Wi-Fi. Okay, so we got it running. We now have our desktop in here, our OS. And it's, it looks very clean and we are connected to Wi-Fi here. And we got the basics. We got, I think this could be the browser. So we have like Chromium web browser and Firefox available in here. We have all the basic features that we need in a computer here. Okay, so after getting our Raspberry Pi working, now the next step for me will be to enable SSH because I wanted to just be able to SSH to the Raspberry Pi and so I can just leave it powered on and connected to the internet without connecting it to the monitor. Okay, so on the Raspberry Pi, SSH is disabled by default. So first step is to enable it. Okay, to enable SSH, I'm just going to click on this Raspberry icon and go to Preferences and select Raspberry Pi Configuration in here. And in the Interfaces tab, there's this SSH in here, also VNC, so I'm just going to enable these two. Okay, next is to find the Raspberry Pi IP address. We need this to establish the SSH connection to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm just gonna run a command on the terminal and do the command IPA 
it's similar to IP config, IPF on Linux and Windows. Okay, so just find your IP address in here. Okay, so I just use putty and typed in the IP address for my Raspberry Pi and my username and password and I'm able to SSH to it so I can access the terminal. So this is another way to get into your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so after all the research and trial and errors, I still couldn't figure out how to remote desktop. So, so I tried to see if I could use VNC instead. So I downloaded and installed Tiger VNC Viewer. Okay, so let's see if this works. Okay, so yeah. So VNC works for me better, remote desktop didn't. I tried every solution out there online. So if remote desktop doesn't work for you, you can try VNC instead. There's also SSH that you can have as an option. So at least we don't really have to hook up the Raspberry Pi to the monitor now because I can just remote access to my Windows PC. So that's the nice thing about the Raspberry Pi. It's so small, you can put it anywhere and just remote access into it. And you can have it running 24 seven because it's also low power. Okay, so there it is. We got it working. We got SSH and VNC working on it. So I will be able to start my projects for it. So I hope that you learned something in this video. Happy Pi Day again to all of you guys. And please stay tuned for part two where I will be starting a project using Raspberry Pi. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next videos.